Welcome back to Primetime with me, Rosanna Lockwood. Now, my next guest is an entrepreneur behind a series of tech businesses that has led to various headlines. If you Google his name, you'll see that he's sometimes called Britain's answer to Elon Musk. And since he is the founder, chairman or CEO of around four different businesses across film and tech, it's not hard to see why his company Flix Premier, dubbed the Netflix for indie films, gives a voice to smaller independent filmmakers. While he's also aiming to conquer the skies with autonomous flight, creating a fleet of completely autonomous passenger drones with the ultimate goal of solving global transportation challenges such as congestion and pollution. So will we all be flying around in drones soon? Here to talk us through his British business mindset, entrepreneur and author of the new memoir, The Startup Story and Entrepreneur's Journey from Idea to Exit, Martin Warner. Thanks so much, Martin. My pleasure. Thanks for, for having me. Uh, what do you make of the uh, Britain's answer to Elon Musk title? Well, I was going to kill that off straight away, and that's that I didn't come up with it. But I think they're, they're looking for someone that is a multi-serial entrepreneur, done different things, and it takes a kind of first principles approach to engineering. And I have some things in common, but I have many things that I don't have in common, but it kind of just stuck with me. Um, and, and I just always answer it kind of a similar way. I don't make much of it. Yeah. I'm the fact that I'm prob probably sure it doesn't hurt me. I'm pretty sure, it, yeah, it doesn't hurt you. Do you ever feel like it might hinder you, given that he's quite a controversial figure these days? No. No, okay. So you come at things from an engineering mindset in the same way, especially with the autonomous um, flight type things. Tell us what you're trying to achieve with that company. Well, ironically, I started with delivering parcels by air. Mm. So using this concept called eVTOL, electrical vertical takeoff and landing. So think of Walmart, Amazon, Google, trying to pick up a parcel. You order it like, say, Prime Air instead of just Prime Amazon, and it will be there in 30 minutes. From that, I decided that I... That this whole concept could be another kind of commuter transportation system. And there are a few players in the market. I was the first British pioneer to announce in this market, but there are about 18 of us at the time. There's 150 companies now. The goal is not to do away with buses or trains or cars. It's to add something complementary. One day we might see 10 or 11 tracks in the air, virtual tracks like an underground, with something like 50 to 100 little planes. Um, they'll be completely electric, not quite noiseless, and they'll take four to six people to different stops or hubs. And the idea is to put maybe you know, 1.52 million passengers in the air, which would be significant for somewhere like London. And it's the same to do that, given all the different topographies around the world. That's the, the mission. And we're on our second, what we hope is our in-service aircraft, which is, is a five-seater plus a pilot. You don't need pilots, but the regulator will demand it. Uh, and at the moment, you probably would want one, given the way that the technology is developing. But the, I mean, fascinating. It's very Blade Runner-esque. I'm sure you hear about that a lot. Well, we get Jetsons and all these kind of crazy sure analogies. Yeah. How close are we to this kind of future, though? Well, I think the technology is applied. Um, most of it's proven. Uh, it's not regulated fully yet. Everyone's kind of in the same, you know, the, the same place. Um, I, I think we're starting to see prototypes. The next three years, more prototypes will be out there. I don't think there'll be anything in service for another five to seven years. I think that's just, if I look at kind of the yard length of how long it's taken to get to the regulation so far and where we need to be, and some of it's evolving, I think that's the biggest um, you know, inhibitor. And then there's the tool up and scaling to, to get those out there. Now, that's kind of the, 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 the entry point, I think, for Europe. Now, on this show, we like to get to know the entrepreneurs, CEOs, C-suite people that we mm. interview a bit. And I just want to ask you first off, um, how important it is to you to be a sort of British entrepreneur? Do you wear that label when you're working in the US? I and do, elsewhere? big time. Why is that? Uh, well, well, so I, I, I live 50-50. I have a split American family. I have for many years, but I'm proud about being British. And I think we've got Silicon Valley. We've got a lot of things happening in New York. I live uh, in, in New York. Not enough happening here. And the whole Silicon Roundabout was a joke, right? There were no real incentivization. So I might have well opened up a place in Mayfair. It made no difference. But I do want to start companies here try to scale them, see if the VCs will follow, see if there's enough capital, enough allocation, enough network before trying to move that and, and getting rid of it. I do have a habit of building businesses and selling them mm. in the US because the market's bigger and the premium's better. I hope that changes over time. It doesn't change my, um, my desire to be British, my desire to, to say it's the best of British and to start that here. So Flix Premier, autonomous flight all started here. Do you feel like Britain still has something to offer the world? Because we do a lot of stories about infrastructure crumbling, not being able to deliver a high-speed railway. Do you think we still can compete with the rest of them? Definitely. Well, first of all, look at the rest of the world. Everyone's got problems. I mean, look at the way America's been built for the last 100 years. It's not perfect. Look at, look at Amtrak. I mean, I would, I, would take, I would probably take Eurostar. Uh, no, I think there's lots of opportunities. I also think 
that are, look, the people are smart all over the world. I think British inventors, and I'm proud to be an inventor as well as an entrepreneur, as well as a, a teacher, but we're great inventors. We've had some incredible people create stuff. We just got to kind of hold on to it a little more and nurture it better into the market. Um, look at what Dyson's done. I mean, mm. there's many great inventors. I think there's some great entrepreneurs as well. What has been your best day in business? When the exit is done. Mm. Now, it, it doesn't have to be that. So if I solve a transformational problem that I can say, oh, my God, now I can see the roadmap, that, that's got to make you feel good, and it, and it does. Um, but, but if you're selling a company, uh, or, or let's say you're IPOing, the culmination and all that hard work, the validation and the relief, it's probably um, you know, the... the you know, the best day. And if you say what's the worst day, it's everything going up to that. Yeah. Right? It was the built business that I sold it was the subject of the book, Bot Objects. I was building a pioneering, very controversial 3D printing company. And we did it in 15 months, sold it in two months, so 17 months. And we survived. And it wasn't a bad piece of business, $50 million. But we had enormous compressed issues. And we, many times, the book that I wrote, had to toss it out the window and you know, make mistakes. You know, uh, we had to make mistakes in order to be able to grow in a way at that speed, which mm. is not for everyone. Um, so it's enormous pressure to move at that pace. And I think that most entrepreneurs that are facing that are dealing with or tackling problems every day. As the saying goes, sometimes you've just got to break things when you're yeah. trying to make oh, things. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 You're, you're always going to make mistakes no matter how experienced you are, that's for sure. That is for sure. Look, Martin Warner, CEO and founder of Flix Premier, chairman and founder of Autonomous Flight Limited. Great to speak to you. Thank you so yeah. much.